good morning once again, everybody. It is so good to see everybody. Hi, my name is Eric Bucci, and I'm the lead pastor here at the Cornerstone Church. And if this is your first time joining with us today at Cornerstone, we want to welcome you. If you're the first time online or if you've not been back in a long time, we want to welcome you and thank you for coming. Can you guys do me a big, big favor? Let everyone know how much you love them. Go to the home as well. Hey, Ann. Well, it's so good to see everybody. And I just want to encourage everyone once again that Christmas is coming. And we want to be able to reach our communities like never before. And one of the interesting things is studies have shown, George Barner has shown, that if you ask someone to come to church during Christmas, especially Christmas Eve or Christmas services, 85% of them will come. So I wanted to make sure that's true. So I'm going to ask you guys to invite folks to come because it's going to be a tremendous time. We're going to have five services on Thursday, the night before Christmas Eve. We're going to meet here at 7 and 8.30. And on Christmas Eve, we're going to be having at 3, 4.30, and 6. And so we're, reach, we're looking to reach as many people as possible during this time. It's called a journey to miracles. And we're going to be showing how Jesus desires to give people miracles in their lives that they could only dream of. And that they would have an encounter with Jesus. Not only would they celebrate Jesus, not only would they celebrate Christmas, but they would find the truth of Christ. And so we want to encourage you to do that. And so what we're asking for is that you could help us with that. We recognize that majority of the people will probably come Christmas Eve, which would be Friday. So if you could come maybe a day earlier and then invite someone with you and bring them to ask them, hey, I have a Christmas Eve service. Do you want to come? Oh, I don't know. Well, we got five services. Which one do you want to go to? <laughs> which one do you want to go to? It's going to be a great time. I'm really excited about the choir and it's going to be Christmas carols. It could be about an hour. 59.59, uh, .59, so it's going to respect people's time. It's going to be a fantastic time as we celebrate Jesus, as people have an encounter with Jesus, Emmanuel, God with us, as they have a journey to miracles. So I want to encourage you to invite people, begin to do that. Um, you can go on our social media, and we'll, we'll try to uh, supply you some digital cards and things like that. Well, let's get back to our sermon series on the Beatitudes, and the Beatitudes are, are phenomenal preamble to Jesus' great address called the Sermon on the Mount, which is perhaps one of the greatest, actually the greatest sermon ever preached. And we're going to be going through that in the new year. It touches on issues that no one wants to talk about. Jesus goes right to the heart of the matter, and he's coming to bring us life. And so that's what it's all about. And the Beatitudes simply means, Beatitudes is a Latin word for blessed. That's all it means. And basically, our premise is following God's Beatitudes will take you to God's altitude. I don't know about you, but I want to be in a different climate than this world. One of the things that we recognize when it's really hot outside, when it's really cold outside, it's important to have a personal climate, right? You wear clothing, or you're in your car, or in your house, and you have the heater on, and so you can deal with a difficult climate because you have your own climate. And so, my friends, we can be dressed with the climate of heaven, that no matter how cold, no matter how hot it is, we live in a different ecosystem than the rest of the world. And that's knowing the kingdom of heaven. That's being blessed. And so we're going to be talking about that today. All right, everybody? So today is this. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. How many of you ever ask God for clarity? Hey, God, what do you want me to do? I, you know, I'm, I'm not quite sure. Should I go out with this person? Should I go to this school? Should I retire? Should I take this job? Should I move to Florida like everyone's doing around here? God, what should I do? I got any clarity about stuff. I don't know what to do about this relationship, God. I don't know what to do about my money. I don't know what to do about this. And there's a lot of things. It's hard to see what to do. Wouldn't it be nice where you knew that every step you took and what you did was the right and the proper thing to do? Wouldn't that be great? Wouldn't it be wonderful? In fact, you know, Jesus did that. Jesus said this, I only do what I see the Father doing. I do nothing in my own accord. Every person Jesus prayed for was healed. Everything he did was successful. Why? He knew the perfect will of God within the power of the Spirit. Jesus did the impossible because he was pure. He was walking in God's perfect clarity of understanding. So, when it says, blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. How would that be, everybody, if you could see God in every circumstance, knowing what he's called us to do? Wouldn't that be amazing? Well, the truth of the matter is we can see God. In fact, God wants you to see him. He wants you to see what's going on. But what happens is we get clouded. 
We struggle with our vision just a little bit. Maybe, maybe you're not the only one. I struggle with our vision. So how do we handle that? Well, you know what it says in Philippians? It says the following. It says that you may become blameless and harmless children of God without fault in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation among whom you shine as lights to the world. That's what God would have us do if you're a believer in Christ. But we, how about being blameless? How on earth are you supposed to be blameless? Do you ever feel like you're full of blame? Do you know that in Christ Jesus you are blameless? Do you realize in Christ Jesus, you have no sin in Christ Jesus? When God sees you, he sees Jesus. Now, we still deal with the sinful nature. But if you cover yourself with Christ, we are clean. We are pure. Now, the problem with you and I is, is that we get dirty. Now, imagine if I told you, you just take a shower once, and you never have to take a shower again. That sounds like an 11-year-old boy. <laughs> Don't ask me how I know. My, my, my son likes showers. But I've known other people that I've known. you got a basement full of 11-year-old preteens. Uh, let me tell you something. I'll just leave it at that. They don't want to take a shower again. Hey, I've been washed. I'm clean. No. Every day we want to stay within the cleanliness of Christ, right? And so this is what we're talking about today. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. I want to see God. I want to see God, what he's doing. I want to make the right decisions, right? What should I do, God? And many of us are thinking this. And, you know, different stages of life are represented here today. There are people that maybe you're advanced in years, and you're thinking, well, what happened if my spouse died? What do I do then? Do I move in with the kids? Do I go to a... Uh, a retirement community, what do I do? Or maybe some of you are just like ready to graduate high school. Like, what do I do? Do I move across the country? Do I go to college? Do I go community college? Do I do not just get a job? What do I do, God? Or maybe you're in a really rotten marriage. Like, God, should I divorce this person? What should I do? God, what should I do with this situation? And you, you want clarity and you want to see. I just wish I knew the right way to go. And you struggle seeing. Well, God wants to give you clarity. He wants us to be like Jesus. He said, I only do what I see the Father doing. I want to see God. And God wants us to be that. But this is the good news. In Christ Jesus, you are blameless in Christ Jesus. But we want to maintain our purity of our lives. So, I want to go ahead and just review for a few moments what we talked about in these previous weeks, this preamble of the Sermon on the Mount. It started off this way. Blessed are the poor in spirit. The people who recognize that without Christ, they can't do this. They recognize they're, they're de they have a deficit, and that's a good place to be. And if you're poor in spirit, praise God. Sometimes it takes a breaking down until you can start looking up. Jesus says, blessed are the poor in spirit, those who realize that they need God. That's a great place to be. That's a great place to be. For theirs is the kingdom of God. Blessed are those who mourn. And listen, everybody, we have mourning in this earth. Things go bad. But in Christ, we will be comforted one day in heaven and also right now, knowing the truth of who God is. Blessed are the meek, and we would never think the meek shall inherit the earth. How is the meek supposed to inherit the earth? It's the strong. No, meek is power under control. It's God's grace in trusting him, not muscling up ourselves. Jesus was the meekest of all, yet he was powerful. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. You ever hear, you are what you eat, especially during this time of the year. If I look like a big donut, there's no reason why. But <laughs> blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Many of us feel hungry inside, and God wants us to have be filled. He wants us. Now, check this out, everybody. You ever experience this? I do. You go to a Christmas party or a Christmas dinner. I just had a wonderful dinner last night at some friend's house, and they had this um, Bishop Farms apple crumb cake pie, which is like to die for. It's delicious. And I had a big meal, and I was, you know, it was one of those meals where you want to wear a pair of sweatpants. Like, can I just be real thin? Okay. So I'm sitting there, and I'm like, this is fantastic. Let me get it. I'm at my, my stomach's like, you better stop. And my, my own mind's saying, hey, you don't want to gain too much weight. 
All right, I'll be, I'll be careful. But how many people are like that when you are so satisfied with your meal, you're having dessert, you love the dessert, but you wish you could go on and eat and eat like the Greeks used to do? Okay, <laughs> we, we always are not gluttons and we don't do that. But what the Bible would say would be this. It, it wouldn't be like you're famished and you're like, you can never be satisfied. But what it is, you're hungering, thirsting for Christ. You know God, you love God, you enjoy God. You're having a good time at the meal and you can go back for seconds, thirds, fourths, and fifths and you never get a big waistline. Wouldn't that be fantastic don't you wish you could just i would i'm just i'm just being honest with you but when the bible talks about blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness for they would be filled my friends when you and i feast on christ not only are we satisfied but our appetite gets greater and greater and we're more satisfied it's the most beautiful thing in the world. And so when we hunger and thirst for righteousness, we shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful. We talked about that last week. And by the way, you can go to cornerstonecheshire.com uh, and catch up on our sermons, Spotify and Apple iTunes. But corner, Cornerstone Cheshire, there's a thousand Cornerstone churches out there, but Cornerstone Cheshire, there's only one. So you go ahead and look that up and you can subscribe and you can catch up when you're going on your job working off the Christmas desserts. All right. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Now here's today. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. I want to see God. When you think about pure in heart, and you look at this right now, this is like relatively, for, for illustration, this is pure water, and I can, can see through it. And I can kind of see you guys through it. It's clear. I, I remember going uh, snorkeling and, and also scuba diving, and I tried to deal with the Jersey Coast, and you can't see anything in the Jersey Coast except for... Or over front, no, it's not that bad, but it is. But it's so murky and so much silt, you can't see. But man, we went to the Caribbean. Uh, we went, actually went to Haiti on a mission trip, and then we spent a day, and it was so crystal clear. You could see everything clear. There was no murkiness. And God wants us to be able to see clearly. And what we're doing, and this is our heart, but what happens is, everybody, we allow stuff to get in us. Just a little stuff. You know, hey, it's not that bad. I can still see pretty good. But as you discontinue to allow a little unforgiveness, a little anger, a little self-pity, and we just continue to let this happen, all of a sudden you can't see so clearly anymore. I can't see God. I don't know what's going on. And man, I, I, I can't stand that person. Man, that made me sick. That's unforgivable what they've done. Man, I blew it again. I'm no good. God would never accept me. I'm supposed to be happy and I'm depressed. What kind of Christian am I? Man. I'm divorced now. I mean, forget about it. I can't, I don't know what's going on. And yeah, I, I don't know, where's God? I, I, I can't see God. And with God, where are you? And you can't see him. All you see is the murkiness, right? And what God wants to do is he wants to pour his presence in us. And he wants to clean, clean us. And the problem that you and I often have is we're trying to clean this by trying to take the dirt out. But what God would do instead is be so filled of God. Say, God, I have an issue. And Lord, pour your spirit upon me. And the more you pour pure water, it begins to overflow your spirit and it cleans your spirit. Till you have clean water coming out of you and you can see what God is doing. The truth be told, every single day we have stuff going on in our lives that would cloudy the, our life within Christ. And God wants to do new things in us. Well, how do we do that? This is what's so beautiful. It says, rejoice and be exceedingly glad for great is your reward in heaven. That realize that basically these beatitudes are all about eternity. It lets us know that we win in heaven. But Jesus said to us, blessed are those who leave family and all these people for me, for you will receive a hundredfold this time and, and the life to come. That you have a peace inside. My friends, it's not what happens to you. It's what's happening inside of you, right? I mean, we try to do things to get that inner peace. And what God promises us is inner peace that the world cannot give us. Why? Because we're made by God for God. And this is all part of it. So, blessed are the pure in heart. This is present tense, not past tense. In the Greek verb system, it's present continuous action. Blessed are the pure in heart. It's not like you get there. It's a constant process. For they will see God. That's what God wants us to do. He wants us to see him in everything. He de Notice he doesn't say this. He doesn't say, he didn't say bless those who are perfect in purity. But who could stand? But he says... Blessed are the pure in heart. Because we're not perfect. You're not perfect. I'm not perfect. We all make mistakes. 
not a license to do whatever, but God understands that we're just dust. And we say, God, I ask for your forgiveness. And according to what Jesus has done, I ask for your forgiveness. And do you realize that you are 100% forgiven? You are 100% pure in Jesus Christ. So the enemy would say, you're dirty. No, I'm not. I receive who Jesus is. In Jesus' name, I receive it. And Lord, I just ask you to cleanse me right now. When you say that and you do that, you know what happens? He immediately takes it out. But we still got the dirt in our life that pollutes our river. And so what we want to do is pour more of God in every single day. You are what you drink. You are what you eat. And that's what God would do for us today. That's what he wants to do. Now, how do we sustain a pure heart? How do we sustain a pure heart? It's one of the most important things that we do. Cardia in the Greek, it is the epicenter of who you are. It's the nucleus of yourself. Everything flows from your heart. How do we do it? I just want to show you a little diagram of what we believe uh, that we like almost like triune beings like God. We have the body, we have the soul, and we have the spirit. The human spirit lives forever. Now, before the fall, Adam and Eve and our first parents had communion with God. You talk to God and your relationship with God is through the spirit. It's through the inner man. And so let me, let me go ahead and explain to you this a little bit. Okay, your parts of your soul. You have your body, which is your shell, right? Then you have your soul, which includes your mind, your will, and your emotions. And then you have your spirit, which has fellowship with God. Well, when we sin and we turn away from God, what happened? It was broken. Okay, that direct line to God was, was clouded, was broken. And now people would say, uh, that what you really need to do is get in touch with your inner self. Find the God within. And there's a lot of truth there. But the problem is, you're not God, and neither am I. And I looked in. It's a mess. It isn't about that. Jesus told his disciples and us, he says, out of your innermost being will flow rivers of living water. There's an underground raging river spring that God has for us. So he does want us to look down. He wants us to look within. And so what happens is I want to look at the spirit of God in me, that that spirit of God that's in me that flows rivers of living water, that everything I need comes from God, that I can, out of in the innermost being comes Christ. And so what we want to do is keep the pool of our hearts, get rid of the boulders that would block that, get rid of the pollutants that would get that. So I want to see God. But if I get all this murky stuff in my life, how am I supposed to see God within me? Let me make it very clear. You're not God. What I mean is God communes with us in our spirit by the Holy Spirit. And he also wants to baptize us with his spirit and fill us more that we could have more and more of the Holy Spirit flowing out of us. And so we do it in the power of him. That's connection to God. That's what we want to have with Christ. So how do we sustain a pure heart? Here is, here is the first one. Quick to believe in God's truth. When sin comes, we punch back immediately. Listen, let me say something else as well. You don't win ball games by being on the defensive all the time. And it, defense is important, right? It is. Defense is important, but if you're playing a soccer game and all you're trying to do is keep the goal, you're going to be exhausted. No, you need an offensive. You need to go and try to score some goals. That's your goal, is to score goals. And when they try to come in your area, you, you block them, right? So my friends, we should be making roads. We're not just, oh, I hope I don't sin. I hope I don't sin. I hope I don't sin. I can't do and, and if you live your life in religion, I can't do this. I can't do that. I can't do this. I can't do that. I can't do this. I can't do that. What church do you go to? I go to church, First Church of Kent. It's fantastic. You can't do anything. And a lot of people think that's what church is about. It's just a bunch of miserable people sucking on lemons that can't do anything. But Christ has not come he, to give us life, not not life. And so what we want to do is, is press towards life. We don't want to look at the things that are bad. We want to look where Christ is and drive towards that. We want to be a kingdom people. We want to bring peace. We want to bring love. We want to bring God's kingdom to the earth. And so we want to be a people who are quick to believe in God's truth. And this is what we want to do. How do we, are we quick to believe in God's truth? We have to understand a few things. First of all, the Bible says this in Luke 2, 24, 25. Jesus is walking along the way with these two guys who are going to a place called Emmaus. Now this, the context of this, these, Jesus was died on the cross, he rose again from the dead, and one of his disciples, not the 12, not the big, not the big boys, but some of the other guys, they're depressed. 
And they're walking to Emmaus, and, and all of a sudden, someone comes alongside. He said, man, he said, what are you guys talking about? <laughs> have you not heard? Have you not heard what happened to the economy? H have you not heard how bad things are? H have you not heard how terrible things are? I wonder what happened. And he's asking the question and asking them what happened. They, did, they don't know what's happening, and, and uh, they, he's playing, playing like he doesn't know. And then finally, he starts to share with them the truth of God. Their hearts are burning. Then he breaks bread, and they see it's him. And he says, how? This is what he says to them. He says the following. He says, he said to them, oh, foolish ones, and slow of heart, slow of heart. What makes a slow of heart? To believe all that the prophets have spoken. You see, everybody, we got to believe the word of God. I know in our culture, you're supposed to be smart if you're a critic. If you find things wrong, you're smart. Now, I'm not suggesting we turn our brains off. But we need to focus on the truth. Who's the truth? Jesus is the truth. We must believe God's word and stand upon it. There are over 7,000 promises in the Bible. We should start putting to memory. Why should I do that for? Well, that's what Jesus did. In fact, I heard a story just recently by Gene Mullinex. I heard it from Larry Stocksdale, who I had the privilege of spending time with. And uh, he's a great pastor. And he shared, with, he shared about the story of this man that was, this, was actually... Um, investigated by the FBI. Back in the late 50s, he went to a tent meeting. He had tuberculosis, or TB, and uh, what happened, he lost his lung. They took some of his ribs out, and he was basically panting and barely, barely could breathe. He went to this meeting. The, uh, the pastor prayed for him. He got his lung back, and his ribs came back. Now, and this is, and we ask, I've seen stuff like this in overseas in fact, I know a person personally that had uh, back surgery, had metal in their back, and, and they were prayed for, and the metal disappeared, and they're healed. This stuff happens, everybody. It does. People get healed all the time. If you believe God's word, what happens is more you believe, the more you receive. Now, this is not, uh, I don't have faith in faith. I have faith in Christ. And so when, we, when you hear doubts, you're going to die. I'm going to die. You're going to get a divorce. I'm going to get a divorce. There's no jobs out there. There's no jobs out there. And you hear all this stuff, I'm, you're not going to make it. I'm not going to make it. you got to take every thought captive and, and, and believe it. And so when you hear doubt, say, I believe I can do all things through Christ. Yeah, the doctor may say I have cancer, but guess what? God can destroy cancer, and I'm going to believe him for it. But what happens if you're not? What happens if you are healed? No, we don't put people on guilt trips. That's another story. We're going to talk about that in the future. There's a lot to about that. So am I believing in faith? Why do I have to believe in faith? Well, Jesus said to him, be gone, Satan, for it is written, you shall worship the Lord your God and him only. Jesus, in preparation for his ministry, was being tempted by Satan, and Satan came to him and said, if you are, if you are, doubt, 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 doubt. What did Jesus say? Man, you got a point there, Satan. No, what did he say? Be gone. In Jesus' name. Sometimes you got to talk to yourself and talk to the enemy that's in you. I'm not saying you're possessed by a devil. What happens, he whispers to you, you're not going to make it. I'm not going to. In the name of Jesus, I command you to go. Do you, I'm serious, everybody. Stop being a manby, pamby, wimpy Christian. Start putting your big boy pants on. And your, and your dresses on for the, for the ladies. And if I, if I just offended you, be gone in Jesus' name. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, but seriously, everybody, why do we put up with this stuff? Why? I thought, just because you think it, you don't have to drink it. Boy, that's good. Tweet that. Just because you think it, you don't have to drink it. Reject it in Jesus' name. You're not gonna, in Jesus' name, I command you to go, Satan. It just, Jesus did it. Be gone. And then tell him the truth. I will worship the God only. You're not going to make it. You're all by yourself. Be gone in the name of Jesus. He said he'll never leave me or forsake me even until the end of the age. You're not going to, you're going to die. My God shall supply all of my needs. He's my healer. By his stripes I am healed. In Jesus' name, get out. And you speak the truth of God. Don't let this C-R-A-P get on you. Okay, that's what the enemy does. He throws stuff at us, and, he take, and then after you think the bad thought, he blames you for it. What kind of Christian are you? You, you thought that about that person? <laughs> what kind of Christian are you? And then he, he gives you a thought, and then he blames you for it. Just because you think it doesn't mean you have to drink it. Take control in Jesus' name. Get out in Jesus' name. you got to be strong. 
okay, GI guys, it's okay to think. No, deal with the trash in your mind. I have to deal with it too. Sometimes I forget. Now, can I make some, don't talk to your spouse that way. Get behind me, Satan. I don't, I don't recognize. It <laughs> don't work. There's a reason I have a limp up here. No, I'm just kidding. I, no, I'm just kidding. Oh, I, my wife is amazing. I'm just having fun. I, I'm going to get an earful later on. I shouldn't have said that. Okay, be gone, Satan. But that's what we need to do. And in John 20, 25, this is what Jesus says. But he said to them, unless I see his hands and, and mark his nails and place my fingers into the mark of his nails, excuse me, and place my hand into his side, I will never believe. Thomas said this. I'll never believe. Jesus says, well, go ahead and do it. Sometimes we're like Thomas. What a bummer. Can you imagine being Thomas in heaven? Who's that? Thomas. Is that the doubting Thomas? <laughs> hey, doubting Thomas. Oh, gee, I'll never let this down. Anyhow. <laughs> but Hebrews 3, 12 says this. Take care, brothers, and lest there be in any of you an unbelieving heart, everybody. We get, listen, having an unbelieving heart is toxic. It begins to cloud you seeing God. And you, listen, the more you believe, the more happens. I don't know why, but when we see miracles happen, you, you should tell someone about it. And if you've been healed here, please let us know. There's been people that got healed here, and they tell me a year later. So tell us when you get healed. There's a word of knowledge or someone prays for you. Let us know. And those, the testimony encourages and there's more healing. So we want to increase in that. And the Bible says, and without faith, it's impossible to believe him. Why? For whoever would draw near to God must believe that he exists and he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. The word is God is true. Let every man be a liar and the word of God is true. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words are forever. And so we have to believe the word of God. We come out. You change your heart, not by hard work, but you come in cooperation with Jesus Christ. Jesus says, come unto me, all who are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. He says, take my yoke upon you. In other words, look, I'll come alongside, follow me, and you and I together will do this. This is not asking you to do something on your own. I'm telling you to do it with me. And by the way, being with Jesus is not just being with Jesus the head, but also with the body. What We should pray for one another that we be healed. So God wants you to be in fellowship with him and his body. This is how we overcome so faith comes by hearing, and hearing through the word of God. Are you listening to stuff that's faithful? Are we listening to trash? Are we watching trash? You are what you drink. How to sustain a pure heart? Be quick to believe in God's truth. Believe his truth. Number two, quick to forgive. We talked about this last week. Heard a story of a community that was getting sick. So people even died from the water supply. Like, what is going on? In this village, so they brought people to the top. They did a, they kind of went up the stream, up the mountain, and they found a dead cow in the stream, decomposing. And the dead cows, the, the, basically, it was polluting the river and making them sick. How many of us have dead cows polluting the river of God in us? We got stuff that's dead. We have unforgiveness festering. We have sin unrepented from, just festering. And you're wondering, why is my water so cloudy? I can't see God. It's because there's pollutants in there. So what they had to do is get rid of the dead carcass and let the streams flow away. The sin and the disease, and it became pure again. Let God flow through you. Let God flow through me. Quick to forgive. He said to them, because of your hardness of heart, Moses allowed you to divorce your wives, but from the beginning it was not so. What does that mean? Well, the hardness of your heart. The Pharisees came to Jesus. Hey, is it permissible to for a man to divorce his wife under any circumstances like Moses said? It's what Jesus said. It was because of the hardness of your heart. Most marital problems is because of the hardness of my heart and the hardness of your heart. So what do we have to do? We have to work on the heart. We have to work on the heart. See, above all else, Guard, guard your heart. Cardia, which is the epicenter, which you talked earlier. Guard your heart for everything you do comes from it. Everything you do, you see through your heart. It's the lens in which you look through life. It's why we have to make sure our hearts are pure. Well, how do we do that? Well, this is the first issue. You gotta understand that you got problems and so do I. He who says he without sin is a liar. We all have sin. Uh, we all struggle with sin. Yes, God forgives us from our sin, but how many folks know we're still going to sin? 
Not on purpose, though it has happened. God forgives us, but this is what happens. The heart is deceitful. Above all things, and desperately sick, who can understand it? And what we have to do is what we do. Lord, search me. Try me. Know my heart, God. See if there's anything in me that is not right. Ask the Lord. God, what's going on? I have these anxious thoughts about the future. God, why am I anxious about the that? Lord, is there any offensive way in me? God, search me. And then ask your spouse, and they'll tell you. Seriously, it's wonderful to ask your friends, your spouse, if you're married, not your friends that are believers. Hey, listen, tell me the truth. Is there something going on in my life? When's the last time someone ever told you something honestly about yourself? If you can't remember, chances are you're not approachable. Just saying, something to chew on. So create in me a pure heart, O oh God, and renew a steadfast spirit. Who creates the pure heart? God, what do we have to do? Let it happen. Okay, remember everybody, it's that spring inside of you. It's that raging river inside of us. So what we want to do is confess the carcasses Remove them with the help of the body of Christ and let his streams begin to pour in us and get away from the silt so we can see God with a pure heart and know what he's calling us to do. In Ephesians 4, 31, it says the following. Let all, this is the pollutants. Let all bitterness and wrath, anger, clamor, slander be put away from you along with malice. Be kind to one another, right? Tenderhearted and forgiving one another. Listen, everybody. Christianity, what Jesus did is based upon one basic thing. He died on the cross for our sins. That's the first one. What's the second one? How can we have a relationship with Christ? What does he do for us? He does what? He forgives us. The basis of your relationship with Christ is based upon forgiveness. Jesus says, if you don't forgive others, I won't forgive you. It's important to forgive. Forgiveness is one of the biggest carcasses that gets, and every day, you're going to have to forgive yourself and other people. If you don't believe me, you'll see what I'm talking about. Every day, I have to forgive myself. Every day. Seriously, there's always something I mess up. And so do you. And if you don't forgive yourself, you've really got problems. Thanks, guys. Leave me up here by myself. <laughs> Be kind to one another. Tenderhearted, forgiving one another. You guys have it all together, don't you? Yeah, you're got, no, I'm just kidding. Tenderhearted, forgiving one another as God in Christ has forgiven you. That is so important. How to sustain a pure heart? Quick to believe in God's truth, quick to forgive, and quick to repent. Turn away. I don't know about you, but uh, sometimes we have cereal bowls around the house because the kids get hungry in the middle, you know, later at night and they pour themselves a bowl of cereal. Sometimes they might have cornflakes, or cornflakes is notorious for this. And, if you have uh, cornflakes and you leave a few flakes in there, what you normally do is you take the sink and you wash it away. You, the water come, comes right off. Easy. Now, what happens if you don't put it in water and you leave it overnight? The next morning, you say, I'll put it in the dishwasher. It comes out, the cornflakes are still there. You got a hacksaw. I mean, you can't get the cornflakes off. They've almost bonded with the bowl. Right. You let, but what happens if you deal with it right away? It's a lot easier. The longer you let the stuff on you, the harder to deal with it. As soon as you fall in the mud, get up, change your clothes, and get right. Don't wait because the enemy will go, see, you fall in the mud. Look at how dirty you are. I'm so dirty. How you doing? I'm so dirty. Look at me. How's your day? I'm so dirty. Next, the other day goes by. How you doing? Look how dirty. Get the dirty clothes off. Let the Lord cleanse you. To get out of the mud. You're going to fall in the mud. Get out of the mud. Don't wait. Get clean, everybody. How do I get clean? Through Jesus Christ. Forgive yourself and forgive each, each other. And quick to believe in God's truth, quick to forgive, and quick to get rid of the sin which pollutes you, everybody. Immediately do that. My dear children, I'm writing this to you that you will not sin. But if anyone does sin, which we all do, we have a what? God's for us. Can you imagine God in heaven? Hey, uh, Jesus, yeah. Go check on Eric Bucci, please. Oh, him again? Yeah. Imagine he's like, you messed up again, huh? I don't know why I put up with you. 
You're such a loser. I'm sick and tired of you. You never do anything right. Is that the word of God speaking? That's a false Christ. That's called the Satan. That's called the enemy. We have an advocate. He went through a lot to set us free. So all you have to do is deal with it. Say, I, I recognize I screwed up. God, I sinned. Get up off the mat. Like Mickey and Rocky. Get up, you son of God. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate who pleads our case before the Father, according to Christ, based upon Christ Jesus. Father, I confess my sins to you. I ask you to forgive me in Jesus' name. Now go tell your brother or sister, oh, please, do I have to do that? Well, what does the Bible say, Eric? Uh, it says, confess your sins to one another that you may be healed. Healing comes through the body of Christ. You need accountability. You see, let me just go off on, this, on a little tangent for a moment, if that's okay with you. We're so against the Catholic Church. They have confession. That's wrong. Well, they got something going on right there. We've tried so not like to be the Catholic Church that we've left out something important. The Bible says confess your sins to one another. It doesn't just say the priest, because we're a kingdom of priests, by the way. Find someone, you tell them what's going on. Tell them what's going on. Will you pray with me about this? Yeah, but all I need is Jesus. Really? And you're still struggling for the last 20 years with the same thing. All you need is Jesus. Well, Jesus says, I have my body. Hello, everybody. I'm not, I, okay? Takes the body to heal the body. We need to pray for each other. I, I, last week, I took a chance at, at the high school dance. I told you what I was going through, right? I, I, if you were not here last week, I shared with you a little bit what I was going through. Let's listen, let's take off the mask. Let's stop trying to be Mr. and Mrs. Perfect. And let's be real with each other. And say, you know, I'm struggling with this. So am I. Pray, get help. See, but if anyone does not sin, we have an advocate who pleads our case before the Father. Now, I'm not saying that Jesus can't forgive you without the body of Christ. So don't give me a, t a text message or an email today or tomorrow. I'm not saying that Christ is enough. But complete healing often comes through the body. Okay, everybody? It's like, imagine I cut my hand and I say, well, I don't, need my, I don't need my hand. I have my head. No, the head will tell the body to heal itself. That's what happens here. You see, he is Jesus Christ. The one who is truly righteous. He himself is the sacrifice that atones for our sins. And not only our sins, but the sins of the whole world. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Are you pure in heart? Chances are, like me, you have to watch what's going on. And let God change you. And this is what we're going to want to do. See, Christ, he's the one that's truly righteous. Have you a let Christ come in your life? Before we do that, though, let me ask you a question. How's your stream? How's the inner part of your heart? What comes out of you? What, what, when people talk about you, what do they say? Oh, you know, uh, she's nice, but man, she's so, so negative. Yeah, I mean, what's coming out of you? What are you feeling? What are you thinking? Can I see God? Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. I can't see God. If you can't see God, chances are, you're not pure in heart. Chances are you've got silt in your life. Chances are you can't see because you haven't surrendered to God. This is talking about believers here. Let's take a moment and pray. Father, in Jesus' name, Lord, all of us up here, Lord, all of us here today, watching online, in person, Lord, all of us, we've given our lives to you. Many of us have done that. But God, we've got cloudiness in our life. We can't always see what you're doing. And Father, we're reminded today how important it is to believe your word to believe your word, to forgive, and to repent quickly to keep our hearts pure. Father, I pray you'd show us any area of our life right now which we're allowing junk to get in our lives, Father. If there's any areas of our lives we've allowed it and we've made a provision for the division from you. Lord, show us those areas right now, God. In Jesus' name. You know, some of you guys are putting people in your heart right now, and you're saying, no, no, I can't do that. The guy says, that's right, you can't, but I can. And the power of his might put on the full armor of God. And you may be able to stand against the devil's wiles. And the only way we can do that is be obedient to him. Right now, just take a moment. Maybe you have to talk to someone today. Maybe you have to find a trusted Christian friend and confess that you're struggling with something, a secret sin that's holding you hostage in your life. It's time to put the light on. 
Sin grows in the dark. Mold grows in the dark. Put the light of Christ on it. Father, in Jesus' name, Father, you promised the blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see you. God, we want to see you. In this day of cloudiness, we want to be able to see clearly who you are and what you're doing about and around us. Lord, I pray right now that you would begin to bring to our minds things that we need to give up to you, people we need to forgive. Lord, so many of us, myself included, have let doubt and fear cloud our minds. Lord, we choose to believe your word over our thoughts and our feelings. We choose to repent and ask for forgiveness in Jesus' name. Amen. Let me ask you another question today. And this, I ask this every single week. If you were to die right here today on the way home from church, uh, how, how horrible would that be? It has happened before. Do you know for certain you'd be with God in heaven? If you say, well, I'm a pretty good person, and compared to everybody else, I'm, I'm pretty good. That doesn't cut it, because no one's good enough. There's only one way to have salvation. There's only one way to be in heaven with Christ one day. There is a place called hell, everybody. If you want to know what it's like, look at the newspaper of, this, of, the, of that violence, of the killing, of all these horrible things in the world. That is an example of a... You, you, you take God out of the equation, it all falls into evil. And hell is a place of eternal evil, not made for us. God has come to save us. The reason why you're alive is because he wants to save you. So he's not a vindictive God. He's a loving God. For God so loved the world. He so loved us. But have you given your life to him? The truth is you're not good enough. Neither am I. Only Jesus is good enough. And so get right with God today. But there's only one way that can happen, everybody. You have to, number one, admit that you're a sinner. And some of you have a hard time doing that. Number two, you have to say, I resign from being in charge of my life. Because you're not the owner of your life. God's the owner of you. You're designed to have God flow through you. If you don't do that, you're going to be default on your design. And that's what I encourage you to do. Number three, give your life to Christ. It's that simple, everybody. It's not complicated. It's simple, but it's so profound. I'm going to ask you to bow your heads and close your eyes for a moment. How many of you would say today, Lord, uh, Pastor, I used to walk with God, but I, I've walked away. And I'm not walking the right way. And I want to get right today. I don't really know how I am with God, frankly. Or maybe some of you would say that I've never completely handed my life over to Christ, but I realized today I need to do that. Can I just do a quick show of hands so I know how to pray? Let's be honest here today. Thank you. Anyone else? Thank you. Anyone else? Okay, let's pray this prayer in our heart. Lord Jesus, I believe you're the Son of God. I believe you rose again from the dead. I ask you right now to forgive me of all the things I've ever done wrong, both known and unknown. And I choose this day with your help to follow you. Thank you for forgiving me of my sins. Thank you, Lord God, that I am now your child in Jesus' name. If you prayed that prayer, we believe you became born again. Jesus never says one and done. This is what he says. You're saved. He says, come follow me. And so Cornerstone Church is a community of people that are following Christ together. And so if you made that decision today, there is a card in the front pocket of your seat if you're here. You can fill it out, my decision today. If you're online, you can also, or want to use your phone, you can text to 860-499-4888. That's 860-499-4888. Text BELIEVE, and we'll help you with the next steps okay everybody and at the end of the service we'll have a prayer team up here front and also if you want to talk to someone at the front desk we'll give you a bible we want to help you in the next stages of your life amen everybody awesome hey listen everybody it's the end of the year and uh if you want to catch up your giving you don't have to give you get to give god loves a cheerful giver we believe that everything we have is god's anyhow now, let me just give you a testimony uh this past fall i believe we were supposed to give generosity we actually gave to something that actually was difficult for us to give. We gave beyond our ability to give, really. But we felt that important that we have to help with this situation. And we did. And guess what God has done? He's taken care of everything we need. It's amazing what God has done. When you trust God, I'm not saying you're going to become rich, but you're going to be rich in your heart. Listen, the word of God is true. The Bible says, test me and see if not. I will open the windows of heaven and pour out such a blessing to you. I'm telling you, the Bible is true. Will a man rob God? Yet you rob me. How? With your tithes and offerings. Listen, this is not about Cornerstone Church. This is about giving to Christ. 
And the Bible does say, bring the tithe to the local storehouse. That's where you go. If this is this not your church, then give it to the church you go to. But I'm telling you, it works, everybody. We don't give to get. We give because God gave to us. And when you have that attitude, God says, I can bless him or her because they're not, they're not holding on. They have open hands. And you know what it also does? Hey, God, I'm being obedient. I'm spending less than I make, and I'm being generous. I'm tithing. So, Father, I ask that you would bless me according to your word. And guess what he'll do? He'll bless you. So I'm just telling you, with no apologies, it works in Jesus' name. So you can do it uh, four different ways. You can text Cornerstone Church to 833-245-5608, cornerstonecheshire.com. Uh, there are boxes in the back as well. You can put your tithes and offerings in the box. Father, I pray you bless these tithes and offerings today, Father. I thank you. You promise you'll meet all of our needs according to your grace. So, Father, I pray for all the needs that are necessary in this place. We thank you that your word is true. Heaven and earth will pass away, but your word is true. Father, I thank you. I ask a blessing as we make a difference together. Thank you that we're able to help people in, around the world through our missionaries. Thank you that we're able to help our children to know more about you. Thank you that we're able to help people get off drugs right here in New Haven through our Teen Challenge support. Thank you that we're able to touch people at Yale University uh, and, and students in Jesus' name. Well, we thank you that we're able to make a difference together. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. May you seek God like you never have before as you allow him to cleanse you as you stay in his truth. In Jesus' name. God bless you.